Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 17th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, and today I'm going to be going over a hand from the World Series of Poker Final Table. Obviously, I did not play this one, because I didn't make the World Series Final Table. Um, I'm going to try to do that this year, though. Right here, we're down to nine players. As you see, the stacks vary completely. And right here, Heinz opens to 1.3 million, which is about a two-big-blind raise with pocket queens. And I think this is a perfectly fine play, and I don't really think any other play would make sense. Uh, Lamb calls. It folds around to O'Day, who makes it 410,000. And, you know, there are a lot of big payout jumps at the World Series final table. And because of that, I'm not too sure there's a whole lot of value in shoving with pocket queens here. And I know that may sound insane, but... If you shove a queens here, a lot of players will get off of hands like jacks and tens, no problem. So you're only going to get O'Day off of his bluffs and hands that you don't really mind to be in there, like pocket jacks, pocket tens, ace queen, maybe even like nine eight suited, stuff like that. You can get him off of all of those if you rip it all in here. I do think that shoving is really the only option given their stack sizes. Shoving or calling. Um, I don't really think you should be making it you know, 800 or 8 million and then folding to a shove or anything like that, or 8 million to induce a shove. I think you're probably better off calling here and taking a flop in general. Now, if this was a final table where there was less money at stake, like say you're playing a $1,000 tournament at Bellagio and everyone there has, you know, $200,000 to their name, I think this would be a pretty easy shove because in that final table, no one's really going to care about making it deeper. But at this final table, the bubble fa the bubble factor is so strong that I think calling here is probably going to be the right play. So uh, Heinz does call, and I like that call. And you're not so much calling here to get away from the hand. You have to realize you're calling here to try to get your opponent to put a lot of money in with their air. So I do think the call is perfectly fun. And when O'Day 3-bets, I really don't know anything about O'Day's game, or Heinz's game for that matter, but if this is just like a generic opponent, I expect he's going to have something like good big cards, like ace-king, ace-queen, maybe big pairs, like maybe nines or better, and then some random hands like pseudo-connectors. So we get a pretty pretty good flop for Heinz. Um, and O'Day bets 4.6 million. I think this is a pretty easy call. I don't really I don't really think there's any other possibility here. If you shove here, you're going to get O'Day off of a lot of air, which is really bad. And if O'Day has us beat, he's going to call virtually every time. So I don't really think shoving here has too much merit. Um, you, of course, do give up some free cards, which may come back to bite you. If a club comes on the turn, you know, it's it's not really that bad because you have the queen of clubs, which will give you some outs. Or, if your opponent does happen to have, like, ace-king with the ace of clubs, it may induce him to get it all in, drawing pretty thin. So you don't really mind if a club peels off. So what cards are bad for us on the turn? And the only the only cards that are bad are, like, an ace or a king. And even then, if our opponent's sitting over here with jacks, it's not like the end of the world, because he's probably going to give up and just try to get the showdown at that point. So I think call here is pretty good. I don't really think there's any other option. Turns to two of clubs, so effectively a stone blank. And O'Day now bets 8.2 million. And uh, notice Hines only has 16 million behind. So if he raises, it's going to be a min-raise on the river. So he's probably going to get called unless O'Day has air. Sort of interesting, though. Notice there was 2 million in the pot on the f on the turn going to the turn. I think that if O'Day is going to make a bet here, it should probably just be a shove. Unless he assumes Heinz is going to play extraordinarily straightforward. Like, say Heinz did decide to float the flop with ace-jack with the ace of clubs and peels this club. If Heinz ever jams it all in here with that jack of clubs, or, or with the ace of clubs, then I really hate O'Day's bet if he's intending on folding. And anytime you're making a bet where there is no intention to fold, you probably want to be able to make a bet that you can, that, that, that has a bluff possible. I guess what I'm trying to say is you need to be balanced. And I'm not sure if this bet is balanced in the least bet. I think it's either a stone bluff or a very good hand, like aces or kings, or some random eight. So the bet's pretty polarized, right? And if the bet is generally going to be polarized, I think calling here is probably best for Heinz, even though, um, you know, there's a lot of money in the pot, and he doesn't really mind picking it up. 
I think calling is probably best here. And the reason I like a call is because if O'Day is bluffing, he's probably drawing near dead. And if he has you beat, you are you know you're not folding. It doesn't really matter. You're getting it all in regardless on the river. So I think right here you need to call to just keep those bluffs in his range. That being said, like I said, it is only a min raise, and because of that, at this final table, if you can ever get your opponent to fold right here, I don't think it's that bad. Even if your opponent has, like, say he has ace-jack with no clubs, if he's deciding to spaz out here, uh, which I don't think would be very good, um, you don't really mind him folding because he does have some percentage, some percent equity, and you don't know if he's going to spaz off on the river for sure. Um, if your opponent has pocket kings here, and he bets the turn and you call, he may check the river, in which case you could check it back. If if you do call the turn and your opponent checks the river, you need to check back. I think that's pretty pretty common sense. That 8 million chips you save behind is worth a ton of equity. I mean, look, there's this holding guy here that has only 9 million, so it's not like you'd be totally out of it. Ugh, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling. Um, this is a tough spot at the World Series final table, and I would be pretty unhappy about it, but I think I would call and just pray my opponent doesn't luck sack me on the river. Hines does go all in, and O'Day folds. Okay. Um, O'Day apparently had nothing. Um, if I had to guess his range, I mean, I guess it's just some sort of stone bluff, like either ace, queen, ace, jack, maybe something like pocket four, pocket threes, pocket fives. He just decided to bet with that has no club. Uh, maybe Jack 10, Queen Jack, something like that. But I mean, it must be just Stone Air because whatever it is, right here, he only needs to win 15% of the time to call. And, you know, everything except for just Stone Air has probably that much equity. So, pretty cool spot for Hines. Uh, he probably, probably felt like throwing up the whole hand. I imagine it's extraordinarily exciting. Uh, hopefully. One of our one of the listeners here gets to be a member of the final table one day, or hopefully it's me. So that's that for this hand. Check back for part two, or I will figure out what O'Day has, and I will critique his play. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.